Hey guys, today I'm filming the strip down challenge finally. I was tagged so long ago. Sophia from Sophia Styles tagged me. She's one of my really good friends here on YouTube and I've actually met her a couple of times. She's really sweet in person, just as sweet as she is in her videos. So thank you Sophia for tagging me and I'm sorry that it took me so long, but I'm doing it now. So if you guys do not know what the strip down tag video is, it was created by Jonah Green and it was his response to a girl named Asina. If you guys don't know of the story, I'm sure you can go look it up on Google and learn more about it. I'll talk briefly right now. Basically, she got really popular on social media, Instagram. She has a large following. She would always post beautiful pictures, always edited and promoting brands and products, with, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's not bad to partner with products and show things if you like them and if you actually do support them and you feel that other people should be using them or would benefit from using them. Now, I don't know if, you know, she supported all the products or not, but anyway. Um, so she basically just got really overwhelmed or to the point where she was fed up or it just really got to her that everything seemed to be so perfect and just so surreal and she just felt that social media was basically living a lie. And um, she just came out one day and um, was just totally unedited and told about her experience and I think she wanted to quit or maybe she did quit. I don't know the whole story like I said. But she basically said that social media is just so fake and so made up and it's just nothing is real that you see. But if you go on Instagram, of course people, a lot of people, are going to edit their photos. Like if you go on my Instagram, I definitely do put filters on my photos and take pictures of the prettiest parts of my day. Obviously, you know, it's not going to all look like that and I'm not wearing a full face of makeup every day to go to the grocery store or anything, but you know, I really take pride in making my photos look nice. I love making nature pictures look the brightest and boldest that they can and I don't think that editing is a bad thing, especially because I do have parts of my life that I share with you that are totally unedited and I'll put those pictures up. They mess with my theme so I don't leave them up, but I give you guys updates all the time on Instagram especially and I'll put pictures that are totally unedited and just, you know, so I don't have anything to hide. But anyway, um, enough about that story, I guess. I don't know if I even made a point. But, oh yeah, so the point of this video, duh, is, um, I'm saying duh to myself, not you. So, I normally, basically, what this video is, this tag video, the strip down tag challenge, is where you're going to talk, well, the person, me, I'm talking to a camera for 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer while I talk to you guys. But for 10 minutes, I cannot edit anything out of this video. So I can't cut out any of the parts where I mess up or ramble or say um or but or whatever too many times, which normally I would in one of my tutorials or even a vlog. I'm not a daily vlogger, so you guys don't get to see a whole ton of my extra life bits that I don't put on YouTube. I'm just not the reality star type person and I don't know, I don't I would I, I get like really overwhelmed if I have a camera on me when I'm watching TV or trying to do something that is just like, you know, me time and relaxing time and stuff like that. Or even if I'm working, like I don't want to film myself while I'm editing a video, basically. I just I like to live without cameras on me at all times, if that makes sense. Alright, even though I love making videos, I, okay, I'm trying to set this timer, I'm just trying to fill time, okay. So I'm setting this for 10 minutes, I talk a lot, you guys are not new to that, unless you're new to my channel, um, I'm Sarah, I don't know if I introduced myself yet, but hi, nice to meet you. So, I definitely am guilty of having long intros a lot of times, very long outros, I put bloopers in, so you guys do see that I mess up and I'm not perfect, but... Here we go, 10 minutes. I'm starting this now, right now. And um, basically, oh wait, I, I can't start it yet. Okay, I forgot to tell you all about this video. Okay, 
So no cuts, no edits, no music in the background. That's basically the rules of this. And then at the end, I'm going to tag some people to do this. And now let's go. Okay, so <sighs> I've been really nervous to do this. I've been kind of dreading it, kind of excited for it. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't have a list. I was going to make a little bulleted list, but that's kind of another thing that you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to plan what you talk about. So you can talk about anything you want. My eyebrow keeps itching. Uh, um, so I guess we're going to start with starting a YouTube channel, kind of, or like the fears that go behind it, or what people think of YouTubers, and we'll talk about a lot of stuff. I'm definitely going to go over 10 minutes, but that's okay. And I think my sound is off. Hold on. So when the timer goes off, I won't even know. All right. Oh, okay. So I do get asked a lot how I started on YouTube, how I have the confidence to start YouTube. And if you guys watch my really, really old videos back on Sarah Lynn T, which are very embarrassing, but, you know, everyone has a place where they started. Everyone has to have a past. So, mine was something that I was very not comfortable on camera, or at least I didn't let myself completely open up to the camera yet. And so you can tell I, I had a lot of cuts. I Well, that was kind of the style. I and mean, there's a uh, fire truck out there, or ambulance, very loud. And, but I can't cut this out. See, in a normal video, I would definitely put this in the bloopers, but <laughs> I would cut it out and put it at the end. Okay. Thank you for being quiet now. All right. So um, I don't even know what I was saying. Okay. Basically... Um, my style of video is a lot different because I did a lot of vlogging. I was really inspired by Vlogvetica and so I would watch like Mika Kitty and I would watch Nana Lou and there was another girl and a couple of guys who I'd watch. Um, so I'd watch them and I just was so inspired by their videos. Strawberry 17, I watched all their videos and I'm like, I loved that style where they had the jump cuts and you just say like random things like you'd be like banana and soup and you'd just like be at different parts of the screen. I don't even know. Hard to explain but that's what I like to do and I also did like music videos where I would have other people's music in the background and my friends and I would just like do random things like roll down hills and like jump out of um, trees like you know we'd be hidden and then jump out so we do that kind of stuff that's how I started YouTube did not have a great camera at all it was awful it was so grainy um, it was very frustrating because when I was in school and we were chosen or not chosen when we had to um, we were assigned projects and one of the options would always be instead of writing a paper or doing a drawing or whatever we could make a video and I was always really really bummed out when that was an option because I didn't have the money for a good camera my family didn't have the money to get that type of equipment for me so we just had a really basic giant camcorder and um, it just it wasn't very compatible with the old computer that we had as well but anyway um, long story short I never was able to have the equipment to do the video project and my friends had video cameras and they had editing software for to be able to do these school projects and sometimes I was invited to do it but I never was able to be like in charge of the project I never got to go home and edit and it just made me so sad because I'm like I have all these ideas for videos and I can't do them so that's kind of like the beginning of like how I why I wanted to start videos, I guess, I don't know. I wanted a voice as well. I was also like, I was kind of shy in high school, kind of just lost. I was not someone who fit in completely and I, I hadn't found myself. I didn't have the best attitude. Um, a lot of things, a lot of factors. Basically, I felt broken and Oh, I don't want to get mushy in this video, but I, I felt broken, and I didn't feel like I had people to share my voice with. I didn't feel like people cared to listen to me, 
and I really took a dive into online chat rooms. I would talk to people about my favorite TV shows, which at the time was American Idol. Oh, that is, that's my mom. Mom, I'll call you back later. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so I would talk about American Idol, like on the message boards. I was obsessed with that show, and it's just like, no one in school shared my love and passion of TV shows and movies and, well, I'm not a movie buff, but I was, like, obsessed with Grease. And I had no one to talk about Grease with. Granted, I'm not into musicals, which sounds really weird because Grease is, like, one of the biggest musicals. And then I don't even, I can't even sit through Frozen and uh, I just have a hard time with, like, musical based movies and nothing against people who do nothing against that type of movie not bashing on like the talent that goes into it but it's just not for me so anyway um i'm very obsessed with when i get obsessed when i like something i get obsessed with it like i become to the point of ah that's all i want to talk about basically i've gotten a lot better but yeah so i was really obsessed with that stuff in 80s music so i just go on web forms um i was on like the who's the boss website web form and that's an older sitcom from the 80s i think it was late 80s early 90s i would go on that website and just talk to people and then i would go on the craft uh crafter crafter.org i would go on there and go on the forms and share my projects and that's kind of when I first started sharing my crafts and my artsy side with the world. I also did deviant art and I shared photos on there which were basically like pictures of me. Uh, pictures of cats and pictures of stuff in my yard too and parks. But basically I, I had to feel like someone like cared about what I had to say or what I had to share with the world. So that's why I just really, it made me feel better to, to be able to see a like on one of my pictures or get one comment saying, you know, this is a great picture or that they were interested in hearing what I felt about a TV show or something. And I don't know if that sounds really weird. I am kind of weird. I'm like super weird. Um, it just because, and weird's not a bad thing. Weird is, weird basically, I to me, when I think of weird, I basically it means that if someone doesn't understand that part of you or doesn't understand something. Um, so that was basically me most of my life, a lot of aspects of life. I didn't feel like people related to me or understood why I was so into art or into other things and they just didn't get it. I didn't grow up as quickly as other people. Um, in junior high, I still wanted to be a kid, and people would make fun of me for coloring and coloring books, and I find that really ironic now because of the adult coloring books that came out, and they're super popular, but I mean, why, why do kids have to be so mean and cruel? And I mean, they just love to bring people down for things that they don't understand. But there's nothing wrong with coloring. I just don't understand why people are like, oh my god, crayons are so babyish, and what are you doing? Like, crayons, coloring is relaxing. It's it's therapeutic, and it's create creative, kind of. I don't even know what I was saying. Um, it's a way to express your emotions, creativity, everything. Just make a pretty picture. Where am I on this? I don't want this to be over. I only have a minute left to talk. <laughs> um, I'm like at the beginning of my story. Oh my gosh. Um, so we all know I can talk a lot, basically. And that's another thing. I think um, when I'm around the right group of people, which I was not in middle school, like I feel, I feel great when I can just talk about whatever I want and not worry about people saying, oh my god, you're talking about the stupidest things. And I had someone or people like that in junior high, and they would put down everything I said. And I wasn't a shy kid. I was kind of shy, but I always, you know, would talk around people that I knew, and I would talk a lot, and I wouldn't be ashamed to do things that I loved. Like, I was, I really loved to, like, act and sing when I was really young, like, eight years old, um, around that age. And then, you know, as I grew up and people thought that that was weird or that I, I don't know, they just didn't approve of me, I guess. Um, 
that's when I just really just didn't love to do those things anymore. And I'm not a good singer. I definitely gave up singing because uh, something happened and I don't know if I was ever good. I thought I was good, but I definitely am not good at that. So that's not something that I want to pursue. And I'm definitely not a good actress, so that's another thing that I'm, I'm it's fine. Oh. Okay, so the timer's done, but this is going to be a long video. I'll try to make it snappy-ish. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying, honestly. Um, people. <laughs> oh, my God. I, we might have to move on to a new subject because I don't remember what I was getting at there at all. Um, so, let's talk about basically uh, being more confident with yourself. So, being on YouTube, you are, you're on display for the world or whoever sees you. And that comes with a lot of criticism, a lot of hate, it just straight out hate. It's not criticism to, sell, to tell someone, you're ugly, you're worthless, like, that is just hate. And there's something wrong with the person who has said that, and there's not anything wrong with you. So never ever think that if someone is being just totally hateful towards you that it's your problem it is not your problem because they probably are having a really rough day or have had a really rough life and they need to bring you down to bring themselves up and they need to feel better and they think that that will make them feel better and momentarily maybe it will but it's not going to make their life better so just remember that my nose is stuffy i'm sorry and i think it's derping just remember that you are never the problem if you are living your life and being positive and as happy as you can be and people are trying to bring you down. They just want to get above you and you don't want to sink to that level. So just always try to be as positive as you can be. And I'm not saying that I never am in a bad place or like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm sometimes negative. I try not to be, but I'm human and I'm not perfect and no one is so that's okay but I try I try to make an effort to be happy as I can be all the time um, and um, <laughs> um, um, but yeah so yeah basically um, Candy Johnson was my biggest inspiration for being able to open myself up on YouTube I don't know what it is about her she's just like the most genuine caring, loving person that I have seen. Something's flashing on my camera and it's it creeping me out. Oh my gosh, if it turns off, I don't know, okay. <laughs> so she inspired me on YouTube to come out more to you guys, like be myself more and not worry about looking stupid on camera because I do that often, probably every video, but you can't hide who you are. There's only one of you. And as many times as people say, oh, you stare at the camera lens too much, there's going to be another person who says, you look away too much. And, like, you're going to stare and watch that video back, and you are just going to focus on the one bad comment that someone has made or the two bad ones. Uh, you can't let that overtake your life. Like, it sucks that it's people will put, you know, there will be, like, hundreds of nice comments on a video and you will be stuck on the one dummy who decides to be rude to you and that is what is the highlight of your comments even though everyone else is being so loving and kind and it just sucks that you know your mind well I mean maybe I'm just not to the point where I'm able to get over that as quickly as some people but I've heard a lot of youtubers say that you know hate comments really really just get under your skin and it's hard to ignore so uh, you have to if you do start YouTube don't pay attention to people who are like when well, look at how nasty my nail polishes are now super chipped I don't care if I was in a time crunch and had to make a video for you guys the content is way more important than the quality of my nail polish so people pick apart at all these little things and they're just everything. They'll find any reason to make fun of you or tell you that something you're doing is wrong 
and it's just incredible like how I just can't, I don't understand how you could go on a video I don't understand the dislike button honestly the only time that I have I think I've hit the dislike button on one video and it was something I was really excited to see and it was a misleading title or thumbnail and it just was not that at all and that's like the only time I have ever disliked a video I understand that the dislike button is there for people to say you know I'd rather not you post a video like this or this topic, you know, and I understand that it's kind of a helpful thing, but at the same time, I feel that there's people who just like go on disliking sprees and they're not trying to help you, they're not trying to be constructive whatsoever, so that's my view on that, I guess, I don't know, I just, if it didn't exist, it would be weird to just like never know if a video was bad because if a video does have like 7,000 dislikes and only 2,000 likes or like two likes then you know it's a bad video so that's helpful but it's just like it's weird when you put you know 30 to 50 hours into a video which for almost every single DIY I put on this channel that's what I do and it's just weird to have like negative feedback on that when you put in so much work and I understand that sometimes people are just trying to help and they think you know well you could do more you are capable of so much more but with me now I know that there's people who put out vlogs every day or DIYs every day but if I'm spending you know if I put two DIYs out during a week and each one takes me over 30 hours that is 60 hours of work. That is more than full time. And that also means usually that I'm working during the weekend. I'm not complaining because I love YouTube. I really love this job, this lifestyle, this career, whatever you want to call it. And I wouldn't trade it. I really enjoy it. But you know, there's times that I'm kind of, I don't have it all put together. I don't have it all figured out. I don't know what you guys think of my life or anything I just want you to know it's not perfect and I don't know what I want to do all the time like I don't know what I enjoy right now because I've had so many so many passion not passions I've had art is a passion but like I just kind of like covered it up because I don't really make time to draw or paint or do anything because those are not the types of videos that people are watching on my channel. It's like, I don't know if I even want to do that though. That's the thing. Like, I'm not letting views determine what I do. I'm trying to just do a variety because I really don't know what I enjoy doing. Like, I used to enjoy clay so much and now I just like, I haven't felt like doing it. And that Zentangle book, like, I haven't felt like drawing. It's just, I don't know right now. I really, 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 really want to zig a zig ah. I really want to do more things outside, but I don't have friends or family who live by me, and it's very terrifying to think about like hiring someone I don't know to film parts of my videos. I'm just like, there's all these things that I think about and worry about, and all these pressures. Even though I love doing this, there's like all this stuff that comes with it, and yeah. I have an itch on my nose now. Uh. Alright, so I, I don't know if that was everything. Um, it's like getting super long of a video right now. I don't know, maybe I should do this again sometime. I really enjoy talking to you guys and I've kind of lost that. Oh, I know the other thing I was going to say. Okay, so this really annoys me, really super annoys me, but then again, I mean, you can't change who you are. So. There are people who are like, you're so boring and dull in your videos because you don't smile the whole time. Like, why are you so unhappy in your videos? Why do you look like you don't enjoy doing what you do? Because, okay, imagine yourself talking to your friend, like, at your house, sitting on the couch. You're just talking. You're talking about your day. You're talking about um, something, whatever. Are you like talking like this the whole time? Like, are you smiling the whole time? And yes, if you're with someone physically, of course you're going to be a little more animated. Like I said, I'm not a great actress. I can't pretend that there's a person standing here. This is a camera. And I know you guys are inside, inside the lens, but 
I'm not able to, you know, there's no one talking back to me, okay? So my face is not going to be smiling and giggly and cheerful the whole time. I'm going to be me and I'm going to be like how I am every day and real and chill because who seriously is like, hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to my video and I'm so happy and bubbly and cheerful all the time. So that's like one of the most annoying comments I get I think is when people think that I look annoyed or whatever. I guess I just have <laughs> a resting witch face <laughs> and you guys would not believe it because I can't do it in my videos but I actually do say bad words in real life. It's just not the route that I started my channel on and I don't want to cause a big outroar or like controversy with the younger people even though when I was a kid and I heard people say bad words I didn't repeat them. I'm seriously like the person out of my group of friends. I'm the person who cusses the least, but that doesn't mean I don't do it and that and they didn't influence me to do it. You do things that you want to do. If someone dresses in a crop top and short shorts and you don't have that in your belief system or that's not how you want to um, portray yourself, then you don't do it. But it, like if you're telling someone else they can't do it, that's like, no, it doesn't it doesn't make them any less or um, it doesn't mean that they respect themselves re themselves less just because they're wearing revealing clothing and, and this is a whole giant topic and I don't want to get into the whole thing but anyway this is probably a super long video and um, I have to tag a few people I wrote these down in my phone so you're supposed to tag five people I have four I have Rosalie from Rosalie Says Rar, Chrissy from Glamour Life Fox, Jillian from Jillian Bauer, and Hannah from The Corner of Craft. And then the fifth person is actually just all of you guys, any of you who want to do it. So that was my strip down challenge. My hands are really cold. And um, just anything you guys want to talk about or want me to elaborate on, I would just if you want a response from me. Or if you just want to tell me something, leave it in the comment section below. I need to blow my nose. Oh, so embarrassing. Oh, by the way, if you guys like this movie, I'm very obsessed with this shirt right now. Okay, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'll be back on Friday for a DIY. And yeah, bye.